në rrath parë dhe shatyrojmi se ardhen profesor Kejn, i cili në vjen nga Gjermania, a e shpikërisht në Universitetin e Kërnit, një Universitetet më të mirë në Gjermani, dhe është një afti lidhur me start-upet, vetë si individ. Start-upet janë një aftë rëndësishme në ditë dhe sotme, si do mos për brezineri, është një incentiv ku të gjithë të rindë e përpikje që të përqafojnë, dhe luara si gjithashtu është një universitet inovativ, ju e dini shumë një që për një vitin e tashme kemi hapur fakultetin e rritë dhe knërgjisë informacionit dhe inovacionit, dhe një kosisht jemi një aftë të hapur për të gjithë lojt e aktiviteteve që ka të mbejnë me inovacionet. E filua madje dhe para dy ditës të shtunën një aktivitet një aftë rëndësishën për start-upet dhe sot në kuadrë të aktiviteteve që lidhen me start-upet duke shrinzuar dhe marveshe që kemi me EU Innovation të cilët i falenderojmë shumë, kemi bërë një marveshe zyrtare me disë dy institucioneve tona, në mënyrë tjilë që t'jemi sa ma afer brezitëri, sa ma afer inovacioneve për të përkraur e cimë për para të qëzo lo ideje inovative që mund të kënë studentët. Jo vetëm studentët e Fakultetit e Teknologjistë Informatikë dhe Inovacionit, por dhe studentët e Fakultetit e Ekonomisë dhe pse jo dhe drejtsisë. Pra ndaj dhe sot, në të mëftuar studentë nga dy fakultetet, edhe nga Fakultetit e Ekonomikë, përbes dhe studentët nga Fakultetit e Teknologjistë Inovacionit, që të më zjatëm më tepër, do të dëshërëve që të jadër fjallën profesor Kejnë, i cili do të bëjnë një leksion të hapur, do të shprej pikërisha të eksperiencen që a i ka në ditë në këtë fush, jam i sigurt, nuk është të kimi parë që profesori jep me student në auditor, në kuadri me të kimive të ndryshme, a i përzgjodhë një nga universitetet që është dhe luar asi, që do të besot një leksion të hapur, dhe unë i rojë shumë suksese, juve, gjithë dhe studentve, dhe falimderit shumë profesor, fjalla për juve. Ok, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. I only just grabbed one or two words, um, like professor. Just to be specific on that, I'm, I'm not a professor, but I'm the head of the startup service of the University of Cologne. We're just part of the administration. And my name is Mark Clay. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for the inv invitation. Thanks a lot to EU for innovation. Thank you very much to Luarazi University. And thank you that you all are here and would like to listen to my talk. And the title of my talk is as follows, the University of Cologne in, in the regional startup ecosystem, tasks, opportunities, and restrictions. So what will I be talking about? First, a very brief intro introduction about the University of Cologne, what we do. Um, then I will tell about the history of what we did in the startup service over the last 10 to 15 years, actually, or maybe up to 20 years. I will talk a little bit about how we collaborate with other Cologne-based universities, because when we just sat in the cafeteria a few minutes ago, I, I heard that the structure seems to be quite similar with some state public universities and some private universities here in Tirana, like we have in Cologne and in many other cities in the world, of course. Um, so it might be interesting to, to dive into this a little more. And then I will, on the one hand, tell what we did so far to build up the infrastructure, and I will get, give um, a foresight what we will be doing over the next five years, because we have a big program started and a couple of, of working packages, and we'll give some insights on this. So I think we have about an hour, so please feel free to ask at any time, and um, I would be happy to, to answer your questions also afterwards. And well, I'm very happy if, it's, if a discussion is started and it's not just me who's talking here, but anyway, feel free to ask. So, and I just uh, give an overview on what the University of Cologne is, actually. It's one of the oldest universities in Germany. We have been founded back in 1388 already. So quite old, quite experienced. That's the second oldest university in Germany. Only Heidelberg is older. <coughs> and it's one of Germany's largest universities in terms of students. We have about 50,000 students. And um, this is alongside with the Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich, the greatest number of um, students in, in Germany. What we have a broad spectrum of scientific disciplines from the humanities, life sciences, natural and social sciences. Uh, we don't have engineering so far. So we are not a technical university or not a polytechnical university. There's also a large university of applied sciences in Cologne. This is 
which is doing all the engineering stuff, and we focus on this spectrum of subjects. Of course, with Cologne, we are located in a mega urban region with 17 million people in one of Europe's largest research and development areas. And all over Cologne, all the universities, state, public and private universities together, we have more than 100,000 students there. So it's really some great potential for innovation there. And we have, of course, lots of SME, small and medium enterprises, lots of industry and a vibrant economy. So far-reaching autonomy also from the university autonomy law in 2007. That means, among other things, that we can build and manage our own buildings, for example, which is very specific for the University of Cologne. And that gives us the freedom to, to operate with, with our grants in, in ways that we like. Of course, we are still supported by, by the state. Also, we have a lot of research and teaching centers, centers of excellence in, in research and teaching. A couple of them are mentioned here and on the next, on the following page, but actually there is supposed to be a, vid a small video and I'd like to try that whether it works. On the internet, we were, weren't quite sure. Which is, a, okay, unfortunately it doesn't work. It was a very brief video about stream, stream minutes to introduce the University of Cologne from the perspective of international students. But nevertheless, let's just go on with this. We have six faculties, which you can see here, as mentioned. We don't have engineering, but of course we have medicines and we have the natural sciences and mathematics. But we also have, and this is a huge faculty, the Faculty of Arts and Humanities and the Faculty of Human Sciences. Also, we, are very strong. we very have a very strong faculty of law and a very strong faculty of man management, economics, and social sciences. So this is where most of the students come from. And on, on the left, you can also see a couple of centers of excellence in research. They are all linked here, so if you're interested later, we can, can talk about this a little more. But you see some of the topics. It's, it's aging-related diseases. It's, it's plant sciences. It's it's quantum matter and materials. It's about building a quantum computer some time in the future. Global South Studies, which is dealing with Latin America and Southern Africa, and the Center for Social and Economic Behavior. Also, we have a big research center on molecular medicine, on genomics, and so on and so on. You can read them for themselves, uh, for yourselves. Okay, and these are four centers of excellence which, which we have um, been awarded by the states of Northern Westphalia. All the universities get, can apply for certain centers of excellence and these are four of them where you see the logos. I mentioned them for aging related, related diseases, for economics, for plant sciences and for quantum materials. And also we have some key profile areas um, most of them have been mentioned, only the one on the very bottom on the right, it's skills and structures and language and cognition. So this is another focus area that we have at the Cologne University. This is all about the tasks, what, what we have to do, and that's according to state law, state of North, North Rhine Westphalia. Um, according to the national laws, the universities serve the acquisition of scientific knowledge and the maintenance and development of the sciences through research, teaching, study, promotion of young scientists and knowledge transfer. In particular, scientific further education, <coughs> technology transfer, promotion of spin-offs. So we have three pillars. One pillar is research, another pillar is, pillar is teaching, and the third pillar is transfer, knowledge transfer. And they have different, well, kind of, of weight, and um, they seem to be differently important. Research is a big issue. Of course, all the professors and scientists are very keen on doing research and are very keen on, on doing teaching. But technology transfer is something like, or used to be something like a stepchild on, on many universities. And we are, but there's a good development on this, and we, we are working on this. We, we have a department for, for transfer, which is now merged with the startup service. And we initiate some, some working packages, which I will talk about later on, to become even stronger in the field of technology transfer. But so to summarize it again, there's one area which is called research, the second pillar is called, called teaching, and the third pillar the university is based on is technology transfer. And this is true for all 
universities in Germany, of course. So now talking about technology transfer, it's a startup spin-off issue as well. Every university, non-university research institution has a contact person for the entrepreneur or is a part on an entrepreneurial network. Students and researchers interested in startups can come here for guidance and support. So you can see a map of Germany with a whole bunch of dots. And these dots indicate universities that have a startup center or any kind of contact person you can talk to when you're interested in technology transfer or in setting up your own business. And in the Rhineland area where I am from, there are a couple of, of universities doing this and we do this together. I will talk about this network of universities a little later. But you see the state, this is a, the map is from the website of the, f of the uh, Federal Ministry of Economics. So the state of Germany is really um, supporting this. So specifically for Cologne, how did it all begin and what, what's the history? So in 1999, Three large universities in Cologne, the German Sports University, the University of Applied Sciences, and the University of Cologne started a collaboration and said, okay, we are prone on helping students and scientists to set up their own business, and we, we built up some infrastructure in doing this. That took quite some while and developed up to 2007 when we had a first kind of network and program got received some money from the state of Northern Westphalia, which was one of the 16 states of, of Germany, of course. Um, they, they gave us money to, to build up the so-called Hochschulgründernetz, so a network of universities collaborating in the field of startups. This started in 2007 up to 2010, and some more universities, some private universities joined the network. When this program ended, we set up some legal entity, which is called Eingetragener Verein. So this is a public network, which, which has a legal status in Germany in 2011. And then we introduced the AGNC, which is the logo in the middle. So the um, Hochschulgründen at Cologne, with the six universities and other members being founding members. So <clears throat> the Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Craftsmanship, some savings banks and some research institutions also joined this alliance, this network, and they all work together in order to bring students and scientists to the market. The University of Cologne was the university that historically had the best infrastructure of these universities for giving support to startups. That does not mean that we had a huge stuff or something like that, but we had two people doing this, but this is still more than the other universities had at this point of time. And therefore, we, we said, okay, we are some kind of the main office of this network, and we also give support to students from other universities. Then in 2015, we came up with our own entity because there was a big chance to rent a building for the university which is supposed to be an incubator at this time. And we had lots of discussions and negotiations with the rectorate of our university in 2013 and 2014. And we said, well, it would be so nice to have some kind of ecosystem and environment for our startups to, to just try to build business models and to give them support. So this all started in 2015. And we gave everything the, the label of Gateway Founder Service. And since then, we are, we are well known as the gateway. And up to 2019, so in four years now, we build up an infrastructure in, in giving support, consulting events and everything, support with funding issues for students, scientists, graduates, and employees of the University of Cologne and other Cologne-based universities. We're doing this all free of charge for the target groups I mentioned. This is how far we went right now. And now I will introduce a couple of three um, best practices, three successful startups, and we'll talk a little more about what we did with, with other universities together. So there's one startup which is quite popular in the, in the area, which is Next Kraftwerke. They are an operator of one of the largest virtual power plants in Europe. And you can see what they do. They put together all the resources of, of private small, tiny power plants in one big power plant and, and even sell, sell electricity over the stock exchange right now. 
Um, there's the website indicated, and um, it was founded in 2009 as a spin-off from the University of Cologne, Ex successfully applied for an EXIST startup grant. What is this? This is a public grant that you can apply for as a founder, as a student or a graduate, where, where you will receive money for 12 months to spend your living expenditures and to, to buy some stuff like computers, um, to pay for patents and to, to pay other people to, to help you with, with um, coding your software and, and other stuff, it's, which is quite popular. So the EXIST Startup Grant is something very helpful for students, for graduates and for startups and that's one central issue we work with at the University of Cologne. Next, Kraftwerke also get financed by various investors, business angels, and uh, venture capital entities like the Hightech Gründerfonds, which is a public-private partnership. And then next, Kraftwerke sold 34% of its shares to Rotterdam-based Eneco Group, so, which is a big energy company. So it's quite a success story. They operate not just in Germany, but in different other countries, have more than 150 employees right now in this year. And we helped them with setting up the business, with applying for the startup grant in 2007, 2008 already. This is another success story which is quite interesting in Germany. It's called Deine Torte.de, but it's also located in other countries like Sweden, France, and so on. So it's, um, what is it all about? It's about customized, customized cakes, actually. So via the internet you can say, okay, there's a tart, there's a cake which I would like to give as a present to a friend, to a family member or whatever, and I would like to have a special logo, like the logo of Lua Razi University, for example, on, on, the, on the cake, or a picture of my family or whatever. And you can customize it through an app on the internet and just um, order it, and they will send it to you, they will ship it to you. And that got quite successful as well. This startup was sold to the Edgar company, which is a big company in Germany in the foods and other areas industry. And they have more than 60 employees in 2018 and reached a revenue of, in a, uh, of, a, of more than 1 million euros, so in a low single digit million euro range in 2017. Another startup which we helped already in the Gateway, so this was one of the very first startups we had at Gateway. This is just a screenshot from LinkedIn. This is Truffles, is the name of the company. And this is, to put it in a nutshell, it's like Tinder for jobs. That's what they did. So um, when you like a job, you put it to the left. If you don't like it, you put it to the right or whatever. And they have developed into a, to the market leader of, mo of mobile recruiting. So when you do a recruiting on a mobile phone, there's Truffles and, of course, some competitors, but they are the market leader. They offer white label solutions for like this, the Swiss job market and other job markets. And they were just awarded the fast 50 growing award by Deloitte, which is quite some success. A couple of more best practices and success stories. What is nice, of course, is that Cologne University was listed among the 10, top 10 startup universities in Germany for the second time already. And um, this is so important because the people who do the study, they ask startups. They do not talk to the environment or to the ecosystem. They, they talk to startups that have been generated from a university. And these startups tell them, OK, this is a university that was very helpful, that has a good infrastructure. And we are very happy to, to be among the top 10 with this as well. So it's quite some things we did already. And this is what we offer up to now, the services, and where we will build on the other things I will be talking about a little later. So it's, of course, giving advice and consulting, but always free of charge to people who are interested in setting up their startup, to people who are interested in getting to know how to build a startup, what is a startup at all, what is a business model at all, how can I do this? And we are very good in asking mean questions. So like if you come and approach us and tell us with um, gleaming eyes and tell, well, this, I have one vision and I would like to do this and that, one of the central questions always is, so what kind of problem do you solve with this? actually, so, because this is one of the core questions when you think about business models. So it's a very important area where we are active in giving advice about the very basic things of setting up a startup. It's also questions of 
what do I need to do in administrative things, and so on and so on. But that's not all. Of course, we help with, with finding co-founders, we help with finding funding, like the Exist Startup Grant I already mentioned, but we also have a network with, with business angel and investors, with public and private banks, with crowdfunding companies, and so on. So we help with this. We help with communication, so we, we talk about our startups, we, not just about the best practices and success stories, like I mentioned a minute ago, but on our website you can encounter all the startups we are just working with. We offer an incubator, that means we offer workspace, we have a building where the gateway is located at and where we have space for nine to ten startups, depending on the size of the team. And it's always fully booked, and startups are supposed to be there for 12 to 18 months in a very, very early stage, which we call pre-pre-seed. That means this is a stage when you're just working on your idea and try to, to generate a business model and to come up with something, with a service or a product, where you can enter market with. What's that, what else do we have? We have an accelerator. I will talk about this a little later. And we have a network. This is a network I mentioned already, the HGNC, Startup to Business. So this is a network where we work together with nine other universities, the Chambers of Commerce, research institutions, and so on. I think this is very, something very specific and typical about Cologne. There's only something similar in the Berlin area where some universities work together, but there are not that many areas in Cologne that have a network like this where universities join forces in order to support startups from their universities, not in a competition, but being collaborative. And there's one thing that ha has been developed, which is called the Kölner Weg, so the, the typical path through the institutions in Cologne using all the institutions of the, of the network. And there's some steps, might, might be difficult to read, but it's about the product and market solution um, up to, up to implementation and scale up of the company and there, for all the dots you will find one partner within the networks this is what all that indicates what else do we do it's not just a local cooperation and collaboration in Cologne we also collaborate with two other universities along the Rhine Valley which is indicated there so it's not just Cologne it's also Dusseldorf and Duisburg which is along here the Rhine River going to the north, and these three universities joined forces to start an accelerator program, which has a very, well, modest name of Future Champions Accelerator. So we say all the startups that have been started at the universities, all the spin-offs generated through the startup services at these, at these three universities, they have a chance to apply for this accelerator. And with, if they become part of this accelerator, they will be supported regarding their very specific needs. So that means we have not just some kind of program which we tell them to use. No, we ask them, so what's your development stage? What kind of, of needs do you have? Is there any special topic in the HR, human resources area? Is it about sales? Is it about the team management, finding co-founders or whatever? So we have startup coaches that have the main task to really be very present with these startups that become part of the accelerator, to talk to them on an everyday basis, to, to be aware about their needs, and to find partners, to find mentors for the topics that are relevant, to, to, to open their networks, to match them with industry and small and medium entities, to really bring them together with potential customers and partners. So it's all, every year it's 12 startups that are allowed to become part of this accelerator program and that was the next step we started to do. So this is where we are now, so quite some way we went already, but there are more things we'd like to do. So coming to opportunities, the next thing we are about to do is to become an excellent startup center. Actually, we are already calling us like that because the state of North Rhine Westphalia, which is really very busy and very good in supporting universities for building up structures for startups, they started a program where universities was, were asked to apply to hand in a concept. This is a program of excellent startup centers, and our concept was successful. So we, we received funding for five years 
from September of this year up to August in 2024. And this means that we get bunches of millions of euros to really scale up on what we were doing so far. And this again is very something very specific and where we can very happy, be happy about for the state of Northern Westphalia. So um, it's very great that they put in so much money and gives us money to six universities in Northern Westphalia. And we are happy to be one of these universities and what we plan to do is indicated on the next slide. So in order to really become an excellent startup center, we have quite some long way to go. We've been successful so far in dealing with student startups, in motivating students, in addressing students and graduates, but we had a hard time so far in addressing professors and scientists and to make them entrepreneurs. So there's a couple of, of working packages like awareness, for example. That means that we would like to, to raise awareness among, among the target groups, to not just have 1% of all our students being prone to, to entrepreneurship, but making it 5% possibly. And as I said, we have 50,000 students. And if it's 1% already, it's fine. But we have very ambitious goals and KPIs, as you call it, key performance indices, where we will be measured against in five years. So, and we try to really reach 5% of all our students to make them interested, seriously interested in entrepreneurship, in dealing with this. This, of course, means that there will be much more teaching on these this topics, on the entrepreneurship topics. So up to now, we already have some basic classes in the bachelor and master classes at every faculty, but there will be much more. So there will be new professorships being started at the university. It will be about eight professor, professorships in the field of entrepreneurship and digitization, which we will start in order to reach everyone and to enable everyone to, on the one hand, be able to think entrepreneurial and on the other hand be able to encounter digitization and to to get um, well, skills for coding and stuff like that. Another work package is education. I indi indicated that already. We also would like to to enable people so to to have a working environment to really be, be able to to start their business. So what does that mean? <clears throat> Educate, I, I indicated, um, but this also means to have professors and scientists who are like ambassadors, ambassadors for entrepreneurship at their faculties. So let's say, okay, if there's any question about entrepreneurship, I can tell you, go to the gateway, I know the people to talk to, but I just have some information already, some leaflets, some brochures, which I would be happy to give to you. It's very important to multiply this, to, to be present at every faculty. With enabling, um, what's that? So we, for example, have, have transfer scouts. These are people who are at the faculties. These are scientists like postdocs and um, people who are just doing their PhD. And they will be given some extra money, some extra time to walk through the laboratories and the working groups and to screen for the potential that there is for transfer projects, for startup projects. And if they identify any kind of projects, they will join forces together with startup coaches who are part of the work package for Empower. So there will be four new startup coaches at our universities. We'll transfer scouts together with the startup coaches and some experts on IP management will join forces, will we'll join a team in order to help the scientists and the students to really bring the idea to the market, to elaborate a business model to get funding and whatever you need. And they will, will also be the nexus to, to other parties outside of the university. So to external stakeholders like industry, investors, and whatever. Another big issue will, will be the issue of prototyping. So we will, and this is empower, we will empower people to build their prototypes, their ma minimal viable products, for example, in a laboratory or by using a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino for, for just some, some simple software stuff or whatever you would like. And it's not all about technical issues, it's also about services. So from the social sciences, from the humanities as well. Lots of things can be done by, with digitization, but not everything. And we will, of course, also be happy to support them in building service prototypes, to come up with ideas how to test service things. 
So what else do we have? Then this is this cloud on the on the right. It's uh, the, the working packages five and six, and the working packages seven and eight. So we also offer contact to the network, of course, and to the ecosystem. That means we are looking for mentors, for more mentors than we have already, coming from the industry, from SMEs, from former startups. So there will be startup alumni, startups we supported in former times who will now be happy to support our startups as mentors. We will also offer entrepreneurial education for the industry and for, for other startups and so on and, and build up that on that network. We will have a working packages, package which is number seven on quality management. Of course, all the processes and everything which is behind this has to be in a great quality and has to be elaborated, has to be implemented. Of course, there are some processes here and there, but we don't have a joint process for everything. So we really have to define how to go on with, with startup consulting, what is a typical process, what is step one, what is step two, and so on, and what is the process in order to find an investor, what is the process in order to, to start a collaboration with with industry and so on. All this will be defined and all this will monitor the quality of our work in order to be able to fulfill the key performance indices. We defined it, as I mentioned, they are quite, quite ambitious. And last but not least, the final work package is communication, which is then talking about everything that we did so far. So that means we have just, uh, just one new colleague she is responsible of doing the communication and digital marketing for everything. And she will be talking a lot about what, what our startups do, what we do. She will support our startups in, in doing um, communication issues because they, they need some support with this. And one of her first tasks actually will be to come up with an English-speaking website for the gateway. And of course, your communication and quality management, these are underlying work packages. They have to be started right now, and we, we start to talk about our activities from the very beginning, and we are now starting to elaborate quality management and processes. And all the things have, have interconnections and, and work together. So if, if you see work package one, for example, awareness, doing events for students and scientists, of course we will communicate about this. So which kind of events will there be? And there was already one, one big conference, a RIFE conference, it was organized by a student club, by students, and they organized a three-day conference on entrepreneurship at the campus of our university. That was just three weeks ago, and it was a big success. There were more than 300 people, which is quite good, as we did it for the very first time in that context. And they had hack hackathons with this, and they had speeches and workshops, and we had like a trade fair where some startups presented themselves. And of course, we talk about this on social media and on the press. And so transfer ambassadors will also be something like, as I mentioned, scientists and professors that multiply our efforts, that say, OK, I know there, are, there is a gateway, and um, you can go to talk to Mark and other people about startups. And they will also work together with the transfer scouts, I mentioned, the people who go through the working groups and who screen for potential at, at the laboratories. Startup competition, we just uh, we just finished the first ideas competition for startups at the University of Cologne. Of course, lots of stakeholders from the other work packages and external sta stakeholders are part of the jury and are part of the network. And of course, there will be a big event in order to, to well, present the, the winners of the competition. There will be new professorships, which is put in here, but this will also be part of the other work packages. As I said, it's, about, it's on four of the six faculties the professorships will be. Um, it will be about entrepreneurship and digitization. There will be in, in work package two basic skills for education, like, as I said, coding competencies and uh, basic skill sets. There will be video tutorials and M MOOCs, which will be produced. This, of course, will be done together with the communication part, and so on and so on. <clears throat> what else do we have that I didn't mention? Advanced skills will be something. This builds up on, on the basic skills, so this builds up on work package two, but still it's also open for people who have been uh, who have been sensitized, who, have been, who are aware of startups already, have a business idea, and 
who might be even already in the market but still need some advanced skills, it will be accessible for them as well. Incubator and, and founding programs, we're looking for, for partners in, at other universities to, to work together with them in the field of incubation and acceleration as well. So that means we would like to cooperate with other fun founding programs, so with corporate accelerators, with accelerators and incubators at other universities. So get back to this in a minute. Um, with the accelerators, we try to get more international. So we open our doors for startups from other countries. In the very first step, we are talking to the Benelux countries, but we are, of course, also open for other European areas. And we would be happy to host startups from these countries and to introduce them to our network. Of course, it should be possible vice versa, so that our Colombian startups can just visit some partners abroad be located there for two or three weeks and get to know some potential customers in order to be able to, to have a market test there or to find some, some network partners, some investors abroad. With the mentors, I, uh, um, I mentioned this, and with the investors also, we will build up an alumni network through the accelerator and incubator system. And let me get back to, to this. Once more, there will be more entrepreneurship services for corporations. So we will actively address SMEs in the industry and say, okay, we have a business school already at the University of Cologne, but there will be more entrepreneurial things on this, more electives on entrepreneurship and bringing them together with, with startups to join forces or with, with students. We will continue to, to implement hackathons in def different areas. So there will be one ha hackathon on education in, at, the beginning, at the beginning of January, and there will be other topics like PropTech, which is about um, buildings and, and um, yeah, building stuff and renting stuff, and there will be financial hackathons, and whatever you can think about, with all the new professorships, hackathons might become more interesting. Matchmaking is one very big issue, actually, to match startups among each other, to find co-founders, but also to match them with, with customers. International network, I just mentioned that. So I think all the other things have possibly been mentioned. Processes for project implementation as part of quality management, performance measurement, strengthening of interfaces, and of course we will elaborate and improve our process of IP transmission. IP means intellectual property, so it's about patents and, and other intellectual property things, like trademarks, for example. And we have to work on this. There's nothing there's not, not an official IP transmission process right now which has to be discussed and which, which has to be agreed on by the rectorate. Also for the transfer process, so how can we enable scientists and professors who came up with an invention, who came up with a patent, to use this patent for their startup? This is also something we need to elaborate on. And communication I spoke about. And um, this very last point, interface to D8, is um, just to, to mention what that means. D8 is the, is the entity at the University of, of Cologne, which is the communications department. So, of course, we have a marketing and communications department. What, with this program, we came up with something in communications. This is talking about entrepreneurship and exclusively dealing with entrepreneurship dealing with issues of this program, dealing with issues of our startups. So it's 100% communication and marketing about entrepreneurship. So last but not least, talking about restrictions briefly. Of course, you can have great ideas, you can have great plans, but as a university, you can only be part of the ecosystem. And with this slide, this I like this slide, which, which I took from, from a brochure from, the, um, from some network in Germany, which is indicated as a source. And um, it says that the university, of course, has a certain role, like schools and universities, which bring talents and ideas to the market and to the startup scene. But they are like, they're partners like companies and uh, industry and SME. 
There needs also to be supports and infrastructure, like incubators, accelerators, not just by universities, but also by, by public services, by, by banks, by the state, or by private people. Of course, there needs to be a political framework, so the laws need to be startup friendly. There need to be grants, like the, like the EXIST program I mentioned. And of course, there are customers, B2C, so business to consumer, and business to business customers, private people, and um, commercial customers, for example. So markets and trends also influence the startup scene. This is somehow simplified, but it, it tells a story of how many stakeholders there are. There might be much more stakeholders, and it's very important when you have startups in your area to work together with them and to keep them as part of the startup scene. And it's very important to, to find your role as a uni university and to mention this, this is a very interesting book by, by Brad Feld, How to Build a Startup Community in Your Country or in Your City. And he says, there are breeders and feeders. And the university, at least according to Brad Feld, always can only be a breeder. So of course, we can come up with structures to, to enable students to think about entrepreneurship, to expose them to entrepreneurial thinking, to help them to build prototypes, to, help, to, to offer them structures of, inf of um, prototyping and um, to, to offer workspace at an incubator to make them become part of an accelerator to talk about their successes. But you need all the other players in the ecosystem as well. And they need someone who's the, who's the lead of this ecosystem. And this classically, at least according to, to Brad Feld, can be only startups or can be founders. But that, on the other hand, means you have closely to cooperate. And this is something which works quite well right now in Cologne. It has started like, from my point of view, three or four years ago that the partners started to, to collaborate much closer and much better because for a long time there were many, many players who did and everyone did his or her own thing to his or her own interest. And the universities have started to, to even improve their collaboration with this network uh, I introduced, and all the other players are, are talking to each other and are joining forces, which is very helpful for the ecosystem. So that's it, what I was, would like to talk about, just to give some flashlights, just to give some introduction to this, and I would be very happy to discuss this with you right now. Thank you very much. This is my contact data. There's even an email address that you can't read, but... Um, Thank you, and I will be very happy to spread this presentation. Then you can also read my email address, and I'm also available on LinkedIn for everyone who's interested. We are part of different projects, and this is for us so important, this lecturing, because we want and we are on uh, uh, this kind of project which needs to grow up, the Innovation Hub for Luaras University, and all students from bachelor and master degree, they're going to be part of our small projects in supporting startups from growing up from zero till we are going to become to an accelerator part and to bring here the most biggest businesses not to stay here and do nothing but to grow up and to make really those startups which are necessity for the country and why not we can come even in the region to go and to be innovative and our purpose is with different universities, we can generate ideas, and why not? We can bring up startups which can be really the best in the region. Somehow, ideas can come from one country, and the other country can be the lead, or vice versa. And this is really the good thing that we want. And when we, we expert from the experts from EU for Innovations, that can support our teams here. And during our lectures, we are expecting so much of those uh, lectures which are having real experiences, supporting us in real lecturing, not doing lecturing in general. This is why we want to uh, switch off from normal way mm -hmm. of lecturing, okay. especially on innovation management, to the real life, to inventing and to preventing in the same time, to build up really very handsome and very good innovative ideas. 
This is why we are beginning from the first year, because sometimes ideas come even from the bachelor point of view at the first level. They need us to grow up. And together with you, we are going to make this happening. I really thank you very much Welcome. for this lesson. And we think that we are not stopping here. Other lectures are coming. And we need really, during all our time, to create better ideas how we can support this ecosystem, mm -hmm. which should come from universities. And university with businesses can be one way and vice versa. Businesses can come and ask for our innovative ideas. Otherwise, the country cannot grow up. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you.